Hello everyone, welcome back to part two of my closures album. Now this is the first closure page, but before I get into the closures, we've already made our cover, we've done our spines and we've got our pages. Now because we've got a repeating page, the measurements for cutting the matting layers from the paper are all going to be exactly the same. So page one is slightly different because it hasn't got a partner on the other side, whereas all these have. So I'm going to show you how I cover the back of page one and the front of page two, our cross a spread. And I said that this is an album which is very economical with your paper because I designed the pages in a particular way. So the first thing I'm going to do is our pages are eight and a half tall. So I'm going to cut my paper a quarter of an inch shorter, so eight and a quarter. Now this works lovely with your G45 papers if they've got a pattern like this or your Stampera paper where you've got an image going all the way across. Because what we're going to do to cover both pages, our pages are six and a quarter, which means if I cut this a quarter of an inch less at six, we've got both our pieces. So the left hand side will go on the back there. And our right hand side will be going under that flap there. And you've got that pattern continuation. So this is why I want to show you with the double spread rather than page one. So with this page, we've got our four inch pocket, which means I'm going to cut this at three and three quarters. So let's bring page two and so this was page one the back of it so for that we've had that nice curve so i'm going to bring in my quarter rounder i had the large so now i'm going to use my medium and i'm just going to trim the corners of the left hand side and whilst i remember i'm just going to give the edges a bit of an inking. There we go. And then the next piece is our pocket piece. And if you've rounded the corner of your base page, you will then need to do the same on this. But before you do it, remember that you could flip this and have that go in the opposite. Or if you still want to keep that pattern continuing, you're going to do that side. And that is how you will be cutting all your layers from your decorative papers to cover all pages exactly the same. Now for this album, I am going to be doing the journal cards on the front because I have them. If you haven't, Simply grab another one of your pages. You'll have plenty in your kit. Just cut it into six by four pieces. And that means you will have six from one sheet and you only need four. So 
so you could just keep one strip nice and long if you wanted to but that's the idea is if you haven't got the journal cards don't worry one piece of your pattern paper will cut plenty okay so let's put these aside for now because we're going to go and start our first closure so i've labeled my pages one to four so we got number one so i said number one was slightly different to the others because you've got exactly the same three and three quarters you've got your bit that goes inside this bit you're going to save because that's going to go on the back of page four so it's not going to waste it's just going to the end of the album so here we go we've got our chickens now i've got to decide do i want a pattern repeat or do i want that now let's have a look at my cards which ones am i going for life is better did have one more somewhere i have misplaced one of the cards i'll find it later so let's go for life is better on the porch then do you know what i quite like separate yeah so that's what we're going to go for so closure one we're going to use to hold down our journal card or our six by four flap here i'm not going to be decorating the back that is perfect for a six by four photo to stick straight on granted you could leave that empty as well and put your six by four photos straight on there or use the back of your journal cards for some writing but that's what i'm going to do today so closure one is going to be a swivel closure so i'm going to grab my cool cats dies and i've got quite a few swivels going on now a swivel closure is a shape which will have a hole to one side so these were the original swivel circle closures. But since then, we've had these diamond shaped ones. We've had these, I don't know what, like, it looks like a lock, like a key lock shaped. And there's ovals as well, which I haven't got in this pack. But my favourite one, I think, is this sort of heart shaped one. And... Each of them also come with some mat and layers as well. So I'm going to keep that one out. I'm going to use that in a second. So I'll show you first of all how to do a circle closure, a circle swivel closure. So I'm going to glue the inside. Let's get that down. open up the pocket there we go and we're going to glue our journal card down as well so the idea with this swivel is to not glue this piece, the piece you're going to attach your swivel closure to. Okay, so I haven't prepped any of this. I wanted to go through each step. So I've got a die cutting machine. Couldn't find the place for a second. And I've got some scrap pieces of cardstock. So I'm going to do a circle one now the largest one has got some nice piercing on the edges i'm going to send it through i'm just going to find my 
pencil just to poke it out. And that is your circle swivel. If you haven't got the dies, just cut a punch a circle and put a little hole in it. But the dies do make it so much easier. Then I've got my decorative piece. So let's just, we have to cut this down a bit. Or we lose the back. There we go. Let's look at it too big. There we go. So this is the matte and layer one. Oh, I managed to get that flower right in the middle. Just going to give it a little inking. And then you glue it. onto the circle, making sure you line up those two holes. Like so. And normally I would make two of these. So the next step then would be to place your paper in place, hold it there. Then whatever flap you've got, so if it's a pocket flap, you would close it. And you place your closure with the hole nearest the flap. So let's bring it in a bit, like so. And the closure is actually open now, so the flap would open. This is now to make sure that when you to twist your closure around, it will clear away, allow it open. Because if you had your uh, hole a bit too close, even when you unwind, it still wouldn't open. So if you bring it up, just about touching, and you would do the same if you had two of them down the bottom, then you would pierce a hole there, pierce a hole there, Grab a small brad, take it through and through that hole, and then glue it down. That would be your circle closure. Then you would swivel them around and they would close. But what would happen if You'd already glued it down and you hadn't done your holes and you wanted to do a swivel closure. You probably think, well, it's too late. You're not going to be able to. Well, I've got a way. And I know a few people have been waiting for me to show how I made these closures. So I'm going to be using my heart-shaped one this time, but any of them would work. You could use your diamond ones. Oh, and he, I said to you that they had matte and layers, didn't they? And they cut six in one go. So this time, what we're going to do is we're going to get our folio circles. Now, these are a godsend if you forget to do your closures before sticking them down. So I'm going to cut a strip of my largest folio. Now, the folio circles are one of the most used cool cuts dies I have. They cut some perfect circles with a hole perfectly in 
the center. Now it doesn't sound that interesting, and granted probably isn't, but what they can do is unbelievable. I'll be using these again later for a different closure, my corset closure. I'm gonna cut four. There we go. So I've got four circles now with a hole perfectly in the middle. These then are the next size down. So I'm gonna cut my decorative paper from these. I only need two. So I'm gonna go this way. So I think I want that black and white if I can. There we go. Okay, so what I've got so far are four large circles and two smaller circles, each with a hole in the center. Now I'm gonna cut four of these larger heart-shaped ones. Get some more cardstock. One, two, So this is the largest one and what I usually do with all I have an evening with all my scraps and I cut out loads of these and I just keep them in bags ready to go. You see if I'd gone for those lock and key ones I already had some of them but I wanted to show you from beginning to end. Now I need two matting layers so let's just get this so that's then this smaller one i'm gonna put my machine out of the way Let's have a look at where we've got to. We have our circles. So we have four of them and two decorations. And we have four of our swivels with two decorative pieces. Let's just give them a quick going over with the black ink. get the holes out of these. Okay, so let's keep all my dies safe and put them back on my magnetic piece there. Okay, let's place 
one of these decorations onto a black one. And you'll see it mats and layers beautifully, leaving a nice black border all the way around, even around the circle in the middle, and your brand will just drop in there. Then on the back, so I'm covering glue, make sure I get it to the edges, and take another one of my die cuts, and I'm going to put it, so that's just going to give me a bit of extra strength. And I'm going to repeat with the other bits. And place one on the back. So now you've got three layers there, so it's a nice strong closure. We're going to do the same with the circles, place it in the middle and that will make sure then the hole is lined up between your decks of paper and your black cardstock. There we go. And we're just going to attach another one to the back just to add some strength. Here we have them put together. Let's just clean all the bits away. We we'll bring our page back in. So again, I've got two of those brads that I showed earlier. Through the heart one and through your circle. So what you've then got is that folio circle with a swivel on top. Oh, so through your decorative one and then through a circle. Ooh. And then open up your brad. So what that's allowed you to do is to put some tape on the back and we can now stick this onto our paper. So if you've stuck your paper down before putting a swivel in, this is a good way around. And the extra folio circles means that you've even added a little bit of height to this. So it allows it to, um, be filled a little bit more. And now, just like before, you're just going to take the circle up to the edge and it swivels around and closes. I'm going to do the same on the bottom. So you move your swivel away. You bring in your base circle in here. There we go. Press it down, and that just swivels around. So that is closure number one. So I've shown you how to do the circle one. Just make sure you're measuring with the hole towards your flap and that the edge of your cardstock doesn't cross over. Here we go, like so. Or if you've already stuck your paper down, how you can use little circles with a hole in the middle to create a little mounted swivel closure. So that is closure number one. So I'm going to put this to the side and I'll see you in the next video ready for closure two where we're going to add some magnets. So see you then. Thank you.